In this video, we're going to look at common mistakes when drawing organic compounds with tetrahedral center. We'll be looking at three different examples and figure out if each of the structure drawn is correct or not. Let's start with this first one. It's one bromo, one fluoroethane. Look at each of them and then figure out which one is drawn incorrectly. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time to analyze. If you're ready, let's go. So we're going to start with the first structure on the left. When we draw tetrahedral, the bond angle must be 109.5 for all the bonds. That means the two solid lines will be next to each other while the two wedges are right next to each other. This structure is not drawn correctly because the solid lines are not right next to each other. So if you were to build this in a chemical model, you will notice that not all the bond angles are the same, which is 109.5. Therefore, the first structure is not showing tetrahedral correctly. Now we move on to the second structure. It's drawn correctly because we have the two solid lines right next to each other and then we have the two wedges right next to each other. So each of these bonds are going to be nicely spaced at equal angle, which is 109.5. And then the last structure, it's also drawn correctly because it also has the same thing, two solid lines next to each other and two wedges right next to each other. All the bond angles are going to be the same, which is 109.5 degrees. The orientation on the final structure is just a little bit different from the second one. We have two bonds on the top which are on the same plane and then the two bonds on the bottom, one is pointing backward and then the other one is pointing forward. Do check out the Tetrahedral 101 video if you're interested to learn more on how to draw tetrahedral at different orientations. I'll place the link in the description box below and at the end of this video. Here's our next example, 2S3S, 2-bromo-3-fluorobutane. Looks like we have two stereocenters. The first one is drawn correctly. Each of the carbon is tetrahedral. They each have two solid lines right next to each other and two wedges right next to each other. Now the second structure looks odd at the second carbon, the one that contains bromine. Even though it does have two solid lines, one dash and one solid wedge, however the arrangement of the wedges are out of place. We should have two wedges right next to each other, not away from each other. So because of that, if we were to build a chemical model, the second carbon is not going to show a tetrahedral shape. It's not going to have 109.5 degrees for all the bond angles. So the second structure is not drawn correctly at carbon number two. Carbon number three is fine. It's showing a proper tetrahedral shape. The third structure, it's fine. The carbon skeleton is in zigzag form. Each carbon has their own bonds oriented correctly two solid lines next to each other, two wedges next to each other. So carbon 2 and carbon 3 are showing tetrahedral correctly. Last example, we have cyclohexane ring with iodine and methyl group. The first structure, it's fine. Sometimes we don't have to draw out all the bonds containing hydrogen. It is understood that it's there even though we don't draw it out. The second structure, it's also fine. It's like the first structure, except for now we've added in the hydrogen. So we have the two hydrogens pointing to the back and then iodine and methyl group pointing to the front. The third structure has some issues. Look at the carbon that contains iodine. Notice the bond to hydrogen is a solid line. That's drawn incorrectly because a tetrahedral is going to have two bonds on the same plane at most. And then the other two are on a different plane. So we should have like two solid lines next to each other and then two wedges next to each other. But over here, what we have is three solid lines. That means we're trying to show that there are three bonds on the same plane and that's not tetrahedral. Because if we want to have 109.5 degree for the bond angles in that carbon center, we should have two solid lines, which is going to be the cyclohexane ring and then two wedges, one for the hydrogen and then one wedge for the iodine. So in this case, if we were to correct this, the bond to the hydrogen should be a dash wedge. As for the other bond to metal, it should be solid wedge, retaining the same stereochemistry as the other two structures. With that, we're done identifying the common mistakes when drawing tetrahedral in organic compounds. I have lots of videos in this series, so be sure to check them out. I'll place their links in the description box below. 
Here's a video that I've handpicked for you. Do check out our app that's available in both Google Play and App Store. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss future videos. Your support means a lot to me.